Welcome to Elisa's Art Room. Tonight we're going to be working some more on our Vintage Paris Journal. Y'all come in and say hi. Let me know you're here. We are live on Facebook. If you're catching this later, it will be a replay. I'm just going to get you guys pulled up so I can see chat. Hey, Dawn. Alright, so we're working on this some more tonight. We're getting there. It's nearly finished. It's getting very full. So that's what we're going to do. I have a couple of things planned out. Hopefully it'll go fairly well. And um, let's see how many people I got in here. A couple. Looks like everything is working. Let me make sure my volume is all the way up. Looks like it is. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera so we can get started. on my microphone. Okay. Does it look straight? It looks pretty straight. Right. Okay, so we're working on this journal and I don't I think I did a lot while you guys were gone. Sometimes I do a little bit. I'll peek through. I know I did one thing. I don't think I did much more. So we worked on this writing board and I did go ahead and round the corners off on it and inked it. And I put a little bit of a waterproof finish on there. We'll talk about that in a second. Let's see. I also put some letters on one of the pages we did. What page was that? I believe it was a dark color. Oh, so I put bonjour on here using some little die cut letters that I have. So just little die cuts. Very tiny. This is from a recent Tim Holtz release. Where'd that other one go? I know I dropped it. It's somewhere. <laughs> there it is. They're very tiny. So I wrote that on there because I thought it just needed something more. And then I wrote Paris on another one. Let's see where it was. I feel like it was in the back of this one. Maybe. No, must have been in the other one. Okay, it must be this last one. There it is. So on this one, I added Paris on there to go along with that. Just to kind of fill up that space because it didn't have anything. So I think that works well. So that's where we're at. I don't know which one we're going to work in tonight. We'll pick one, but let's talk about this a little bit. So last week you saw me just, I put it on the card, card stock, which is a mailer envelope material is what I typically use from these little, I'll just pull one out. Although it's, it's all cut up, but you know, the, the mailers that things come in. And I just cut that out to fit. Is it strong enough? I keep sitting on my mic. And um, once it dried completely, then I rounded off the corners. Just I just used scissors. I did, my, my rounder won't work on this. It's too thick. So I just used scissors and rounded it off, and then I inked it. And then I actually added microglaze to this one. Um, I haven't been using the microglaze because I didn't have any. But I bought some and I was like, well, we'll try it out and see how it works. It seems to work fine. It's a distress thing. Um, water resistant sealer. It feels kind of like wax. Um, typically, I will use either matte um, varnish 
which is the Liquitex matte varnish on these, or I will use um, just some beeswax, which is just in a little sewing thing. I just wax her things, and I just rub it all over it and use that. Because I like these to be a little waterproof because it is a writing board. It's going to get handled a lot. And so I want it to be, you know, pretty sturdy. That way if you're, you know, going through your journal and you're, you're pulling it out of your pocket and you're sticking it somewhere to write and then you lay it on your table and you had your coffee sitting there or something, you don't have to worry quite as much about it getting messed up. But, um... So I usually put something on it to give it a little bit of a waterproof finish. But I tried this microglaze and it actually worked really well. It's got a kind of a matte finish. It doesn't, you'd think it would be shiny, but it's not. I'm going to show you on something else just to show you. I'll show you on, oh, that's not very, I'm trying to find something with some color to it. I want to show you something with something with some inking because that way you can see that it, it didn't seem to move my ink, which honestly surprised me because I thought for sure it would mess up the distress ink or the printing, but it did not. Um, so that was interesting. All right, here's another one. So here's the second one I had printed out to use. And so to use this stuff, it says to apply with your finger. I do have a paraffin allergy, so I was a little worried that it might have paraffin in it. It doesn't tell me what it has in it, um, so I didn't want to risk it for me. But I just used this little piece of, this is like muslin. So I just took this muslin and I just rub it on. Okay, and that's all it says to do. Just rub it on. Just like that. Okay, and then after you cover the whole thing, I'm going to show you the difference real quick. I'm going to just do half of this. Okay, and then it says to buff it with a paper towel. So, just grab yourself a paper towel. You could just use that cloth. That cloth is getting a little well used. So, I'll just do a paper towel. Just buff it off like that. And it does take off some of the ink, but it, you can't tell. So, it didn't like notably do it on my. This is just an inkjet printer. So, you know how the ink is on an inkjet printer. So, it seems fine, but it did seem to be plenty water resistant. So, this is if I spray it now. So half of this is coated, half is not. So I'm just going to spray this and you'll see, do you see how this starts immediately warping? Okay. And it's very wet and this side did not and it, it beads up. You see the little beads? Can you tell in this light? I don't know if you can tell or not. So waterproof. At least water resistant. I mean, I'm sure it's not waterproof, but it's very water resistant. So it does work pretty well. And you see, this is where I didn't have it. That's totally bleeding because it's just inkjet. So it does work. So I like that. I have I hadn't tried it, and I was like, I'll, I'll buy some and try it. It was like I don't know, maybe six bucks. It wasn't super expensive. I got it at Scrapbook.com. So I coated this with that which did protect it just fine. But if you don't want to use that, you can also use, you know, one of the two other things I said. And um, that way it's ready to go. And that's really all I do to those. Pretty simple. This particular journal has a couple of places I can put that. So I can either store it in the pocket in the front or the back, one or the other. Or I also have a pocket on this one on the side that it will fit into okay so it can go in any of those places and that's how that works all right so that was that and i'm gonna take off my flannel because it's hot again <laughs> oh it's cold before i started but now i'm hot 
Okay. So I got a couple of things that I want to do. I think I'm going to do a pocket that's called like a triple pocket. It's made with a circle. I think I'll do that first. I just got to figure out where I'm going to put it because I'm trying to kind of fill up these pages. So let's see where we need another pocket. I feel like I have some cards laid out on a couple of these pages. I could put something there for sure. There's something I had. What's it? It's just some paper in this little um, woven tag that's not finished. I think I was thinking I might could put this here. So that's going to go there. I'm not going to do much else to that. That's just going to be simple. I do need a pocket for this somewhere. I'm not sure if I want it there. Let's see. This I'm thinking about trying to make a frame. I just don't know what I'm going to put in the frame. That's the problem. I haven't found anything in my stuff. All right. Where's that other page? There it is. Let's see if this color would work there. It's not great. Got a lot of reds. I'm going to have a lot of reds in this. I'm going to find a good place for that, though. So, maybe... Still thinking this is a little big. It might be nice just to put folded in a page or something, but it's a little bit big to put anywhere else. So, I don't know about that. Oh, is that where that goes? That is not where that goes. What? Hold on. Something got moved. Did I stick this in the wrong spot? I know there was something else next to that. What was it? Uh-oh. That. What was it? No. Was it that? I'm wondering if I put something back in incorrectly. I might have to go through my videos to figure it out. Was it this? Hmm. Sometimes I pull these things out and then they don't get put back where they were supposed to go. The only thing I know for certain is that was the middle. Well, maybe, was it like that maybe? Maybe. <laughs> I might go back and look at the video and see if that's what I did. Because I know that this went with an opposite page. I don't think I stuck it in the wrong book or the wrong signature altogether. Gosh, I don't remember, guys. You guys probably, I don't know, you might remember more than I do. I'll look and see if I see it and maybe I just stuck it in the wrong one. Or maybe it was that. I, I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. I'll see if I see anything else that looks like it might have been it. I'll bet it was that, though. Alright, yeah, I don't see anything, so. I'm thinking I just folded that over wrong. And it was that. Don't see. Yeah, it must have been that. Alright, we're going to go with that's what it was, and I just folded it backwards. Because this still works with this page because it's got perfumes and then cologne over here. That works with that fine. That must have been what it was. Goodness gracious. All right. So let's see. Anywhere I can stick that. I have this page too. So 
has these little people on here. I like it there. I'll probably just stick that there. So some of these are real straightforward that I have left. I want to I want to make a pocket, so I want I'm trying to find a place to put it. Could I put it there? Let me look at the color I have picked out for this pocket. So I'm looking at this. I I inked the other side of this to make it double sided because you really need a double sided page. And then I wanted something with that could go any direction. So I picked this one. So I need somewhere that I can put this for a pocket. It's not. Yeah, I don't think I want it there. Maybe I'll just put it on a plain page. Maybe. All right, I'm going to figure this out. I'm running out of space, aren't I? I've got this pretty full. What does it look like there? This is so thin. Possibly. I was hoping I could find a page that the black would work well with. This is, I think it's blue. It looks like weathered wood. So I don't think that would work. I'm just probably going to put it on one of these brown pages. I could put it there maybe instead of that. It's not terrible with the polka dots. I'm not sure if I'm like this anyway. It does have some brown in it, just on the edges and kind of throughout in a couple of places. And then the other side, I did a lot of browns. I might could put it there. I was hoping I had a thick enough page to put it on, you know, that it has some weight to it. Possibly there, or the polka dots. Possibly. That's my last one. So, not there. There's a lot of pinks. Not there. Too brown. might look good there. I'll have to find out, pick a color for that though. I'm just going to stick this here because I think the color looks good with that page. All right, I am leaning toward that page. Yeah, that's too busy. Okay, well that might be the last place I have to put it. I'm just not sure about this kind of green. Does it look better with the vintage ads or the polka dots? Vintage ads or polka dots? Hmm. Probably vintage ads. All right. Maybe the vintage ads. I could make more than one of these, but I had one made. I don't think the color will work. Let me see if I see it here. Did you lose it? Where did you put it? Oh my goodness. I've already lost it. not lost but it is in this pile so I'm gonna have to dig through this pile and find it a lot of stuff buried <laughs> my pile
piles are getting a little bit out of hand. All right, let's see. Is it in here? I made I made two for a test. Let's try it. I'm trying to find them. I did this. Thought about sticking it somewhere. Maybe. All right, I'm not seeing it. How'd you lose it already, girl? <sighs> Seriously. Literally had it two minutes ago. Mm. Sorry, guys. I just don't know how I lose stuff so quickly. It's not like my room is that messy. <laughs> it's really not. small so how do you lose them so quickly all right so I did one in green for a test and I did one in this color just kind of grays and purples I think this will look okay there black is, is a tough color in this journal particularly really like that I want to use it somewhere I don't know where but anyway, that's what we're going to make. We're going to make that pocket. I'm just going to make it out of this. And we're going to try to fit it there and see if that looks okay. Hopefully it will. So, let me put a paper clip there before I lose that spot too. And I don't know what I'm doing. Because that's what's going to happen. Alright, so step one. Make a circle. Hey, Anne. So, this is just a um, single-sided paper from the... Uh, ephemera collection which was um this set okay and it's one-sided so I had to do something with the other side but it's cardstock so it's nice and it's got you know some substantial weight to it so I went ahead and just colored the other side with some sprays I just used um a little bit of Liquitex um professional ink and burnt umber I used a little bit of vintage photo um, with some distilled water in it and sprayed that on then I took I'm just telling you because I'm not going to do another one because I don't want to wait for a try and then I took um, the scorched timber and some black soot so the scorched timber and the black soot, what I did with those to get that effect, I can show you real quick, is on my media mat. You can also use just a piece of acrylic or something. Um, but you just take your pad, oops, you don't throw the lid everywhere, and you just rub it on like that. It has to be dry to start with. Okay, so you do that. I'm just going to put it on here. And then you take some water and spritz it. Okay. And then put a glove on because it's messy. You can get it on your fingers, but I don't feel like staining my fingers up right now. Okay. And then wiggle it around. Okay. This, this is key. You have to wiggle it around. Otherwise, it looks too perfect. We, we don't want it to look perfect. You want to wiggle it around. Okay. Wipe your fingers off. And then take whatever it is that you're dyeing and you just dab it. Okay? And then you dry it. And if you don't like the way it looks, you can dab it again. You can wipe some off. You can, you know, if it's too strong, wipe it off while it's still wet. If you want it that dark, dry it with the blow dryer and let it dry that dark. Okay? But that's how I did that page. Just layers of colors. The ones that I didn't have an ink spray bottle or something for, I did like that. Um, and that, for me, that was the black soot and the um, scorched timber. Those I don't have in a spray bottle. So, 
that's how I did that to get this effect. It looks real cool once it's dry. So I'm going to let that sit up there and dry. All right, let me take this back off. So this is already dry. So we are ready to go. We just need to make a circle. Um, I don't know if I can see my ink on this. So you can either use a circle that you have, be it a paper plate, be it, um, you know, whatever, a bowl, anything that you want to make a circle out of, like a larger paper plate or whatever. Okay. Make a circle somehow. I used to compass, um, because I didn't have a large enough paper plate that was handy. So I just used this compass I found. This was, I believe it was hubby's at one point. And I swiped it from him. So I did it to, to um, four inches, which is an eight inch circle. So this one has a pencil tip and a pointy thing. Okay, the pencil tip is nice, but it doesn't show on a lot of my papers real well. So that is a little bit of a problem. Like if I do it on this side, I don't think I'll be able to see it. And I don't have like a, a white lead or anything to put in here. So, you know, I don't know. But you want to go ahead and just put your pointy part in the center. I'm not going to use this whole sheet, so I'm not going to waste it. So I'm going to get as close as I can from here to here and from here to here. Because I'm just going to make the circle from there to there and then around and then I'll still have that little piece left. Okay. It's on this side. So you just do it like that. Keep your pointy part down. Make yourself a circle. Okay. Or you can trace something. Whatever works for y'all. That's fine. But I happen to have this little compass. So we are just going to use that today. And I've got my circle on there. Can you see it? See it shows. It shows it real light but it does show and then take your scissors longer scissors are better you can use you can use pinking shears by the way um, if you're not good at cutting circles it's a good way to camouflage that you didn't cut a good circle or um, even those little scissors that have shapes like waves and what have you um, I have a pair somewhere but I'm not gonna bother so we're just gonna cut a circle this is gonna be an 8 inch circle and the best thing to do is to close your scissors and move your paper at the same time up to the point where you run out of scissors. That will get you the smoothest circle. If you do a lot of little cuts, your circles won't be quite as nice. So you just kind of got to get used to turning and squeezing at the same time. Okay, and we're just going to make a circle. And you, once it's inked and everything, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, guys. So don't, don't overstress about your circle being perfect. Okay, so we've got a circle. It's not horrible. It's wonky. It's a little wonky. But now I've got this left, so I didn't waste all that by putting it off to the side there. So I can use that for something else, a tag or something. So, got your circle. You need a grid, ideally, and maybe a ruler, okay? If you have a direction, it doesn't work as well because some of it's gonna be upside down and some of it will be straight because when you make the folds, Part of it will be upside down in one direction and part of it will be in another direction. So it's best to have something that is any direction to get the best reaction. The one I did earlier, you can see there's writing on it. Some of it's upside down. If you don't care, then no big deal. Put it on your grid to where it's even so you can see that you're straight. So because this is an 8 inch circle, I can line it up to 4 points on here and make sure it's straight. Okay, and the first thing you're going to want to do is go halfway to the center. Okay, so you just lift it up, find your center, 
and you can use this other line here for a guide to make sure that you're straight and if you can't see your center you can use your ruler put that on your line for your center just like that and then you come straight to that that's your mark okay and you try to lay it to where it hits on this line because it, it's easy to get wonky it gets turned so the line on the bottom helps you to stay straight and then once you push it down you get it started and you think you're straight I just kind of do it a little at a time until I feel like it's straight okay then you can press it with the bone folder all right and then you flip it over and do the same thing these are pretty easy to make they're not super hard so find your, your spot on your grid that looks straight it just it really helps I think to line it up and then if you're using that center you can line up to where your middle hits that middle little mark hits right where you want it to be okay and you do the same thing on the other side so come up to that circle point and then try to get it so where it lays flat correctly on this line so I just keep turning it little by little making sure that it's laying the same and once I'm pretty sure then I press it okay so that meets there and then you just want to come up to wherever you want your um where the pocket is it can be really high it can be really low it just depends on how you want it to look I'm gonna go about two-thirds of the way um, and just line up your edges and push it down okay and that is your last crease okay now we want to make this into an extra pocket so we're gonna open it back up and right here this line here I'm going to draw it with a chalk pencil so you can see it so this crease you can use your bone folder so you can see it well this crease is going to get cut okay from here to there so on both sides so you're just going to open it up and cut that a little hard to see try to get it on the line as best you can let's cut that one turn it over cut this one okay so now you close in the first two the middle two close that and fold these the opposite way and then you've got a pocket here you can have a pocket in the middle and you got a pocket there and you just glue it and it can be either direction if you like the keys in the middle like that do it like that if you don't like it like that flip it over and try a different way and see if it looks different I don't know if it does does it so that makes the keys on the outside the keys back there and then the other way makes the yeah so this makes the keys on this side and Um, this here so either way is fine just kind of whichever way you like so if you don't like one you can turn it and make it the other way I don't know which I like better honestly I will be gluing this down so you won't see the back if you didn't want to you could make another pocket there even make a tuck we're depending on where you stuck it you don't have to glue the whole thing down so let me think about that do I like it better that way yeah I think I like it with the more design in the middle although the tag will hide that so I don't know it doesn't really matter one half dozen the other guys okay we're gonna do it this way so we're gonna glue that in place so you just need some glue for the pockets so one here for that pocket and I would put it on we'll close this one first because then it won't be in my way All right boy my glue is really pouring out of there <laughs> oh 
don't know why my glue's so wet today. Goodness gracious. Let me wipe my fingers off. Okay, so we'll glue that one first just so that my flaps don't annoy me. And then we'll glue. Hold on. This is like really, oh, I know what it is. I just refilled it. That's what it is. So the glue is very new. This middle piece, I think I must have cut it a little off and it keeps trying to bend. So I'm just going to trim that just ever so slightly because it's, it's just catching a little bit. So I probably was just off on my cut. Same thing on this side. I think I was off on my cut. You can trim it just a little bit if it keeps folding over on you. So I'm just going to do that. All right, so we need glue right there for that pocket. <laughs> Boy, this is very, very wet. There. And I'm not going to glue this one at all because it should just hold down with the other. Now I got glue all over my fingers. I like having my glitter glue fresh, but geez, it's a lot watery than it was. So there you go, a little pocket. Isn't that cute? So it's got one there. Let me find something to stick in there so I can show you. Here we go. Oh, this is way too big. Grab something. I got hundreds of things sitting here. Find one. There we go. So pocket there. It's not quite that wide. Pocket there, pocket there. All right, cute, huh? And then we'll ink it up just to kind of camouflage the edges. If you have um, any pencil marks or anything, go ahead and erase them. Usually I don't really have that many showing still by the time I make all those cuts. So this particular one I saw um, Kylie Kylie's Card Craft, K-Y-L-I-E. Um, it's a three-year-old video on YouTube. I came across it a couple of days ago. So that's the person I saw who did it. It's probably been done before. Um, she might, might not be the first person to do it. Who knows? It's a little bit wonky right here. I'm just going to clean that up. But that's who I saw do it. And I'm going to ink this with, I think I will go with Scorched Timber because it's kind of dark. We'll go with the Scorched Timber. And we're just going to ink it. That'll make the edges pretty. You could ink it beforehand if you're worried about being able to get into any of these little sections. You can ink it before you glue it too. I didn't bother. Um, could I have? Sure. I'm not, not super worried about it though. If this was white, I might worry about it more because I'll pr I'm probably touching that area just a little bit, honestly. It's always better to ink first, but, you know, if you're like me, you never think about it. <laughs> I don't know why. But anyway, it's cute, huh? So That's a cute pocket. Let's see. Where did I say I was going to put it? Right here. I think it will look cute there. So now I got to make something to go in it. I don't think I have anything particular. I don't know if I had a whole thing of ephemera sitting here somewhere. There it is. Let's see if I have something that will look cute in that. Probably don't have a lot of little things. I wanted a couple little things, I think, for down there. So I've already used this little kitty cat. That looks a little big. Oh, fits. Could put that there. 
don't know if it matches very well. It's not this one. It's big, but I could probably trim it. I feel like I have this in different places already. These balloons. I might back some of these. They're kind of flimsy. They're just on coffee dyed paper, most of them. Put this one here. one more of these little girls. I'm debating on where I want it on here. If I want it toward the inside. I don't want to go too close to my center so it doesn't interfere. But I might go right there. Just so those girls show still. Maybe I'll put one of these little girls down here. I'll trim her off a little bit. She's got a lot of green. I think she's the last one I have. I also had this lady. I came across one of the Tim Holtz ones. She's cute. I thought she looked like a possibly a Paris lady. We're going to say she is anyway. What else do I got? I have that. Some of these are very colorful. Maybe. Maybe if I trim it. I already have this somewhere, so I can't use that. I could, but... What's this? This one might fit there better. I might put that there. I like it. I think it fits in the middle best. And then something bigger for that back piece. What else do you got? Nope, nope, nope. Have that, but that's too wide, I think. Possibly, possibly that, maybe. I'm debating on colors. Just trying to keep it kind of matchy-matchy, but not too matchy-matchy. Hmm, do we like the lady? I kind of like her. I don't know if I want all that, though. I might trim it. I'm just going to trim that off. I don't know what it says. I can't tell you. I'm just going to trim her off there. I'm just going to stick her there. And then something on the back I want taller. So I don't think I see a tall one in here. The tallest one I have is that one, I think. Did I use that? Oh, I know I used it. I had like a perfume one or something. I think I used it. Okay. Let's see. Maybe that. Is it too much Eiffel Tower stuff? I don't like that I can't see very much of it. If I put it behind her. Maybe I'll do it like that. And just something bigger for the back. Which I don't see in this pile, so. Maybe we will wait. I do have this. It's just a piece of paper. But it's, it says Paris on it. I could decorate it a little bit more and make it fit. Maybe. Maybe I'll do that. I'll decorate that with something. Okay. Let's see. Let's do that. Never have enough of them, Ruff. Goodness. I could almost put that envelope back there, but I'm going to put it somewhere else. Okay, so... If I cut that down... Wondering if that would show. It won't show with that. I'm debating if I want to do something else. I don't think it's going to show enough. 
What else do I get, girl? All the stuff I have, I ought to have something in here I can use. I have that one big one. This one. Colors aren't really right. Hmm. No, colors aren't right. Don't do that. All right, I'm going to find something. Let's see. Flower. I have an Eiffel Tower. Maybe too much brown. Yeah, too much brown. And... I don't know what I'm going to put there, guys. I might wait and find something to print. Yeah. I'm not seeing anything that looks like it would work. Let me see if I have... I have a couple of letters here. Oops. I'm making a mess. All right. I have a couple of these. I might could just fold up. That one. That one. I've already used that one. I've already used that one. All right, let's use one of these. We'll just do this. Which one shall I use? Mm, one half dozen the other. Maybe I'll use that one. I'm just going to fill up the spot with just some writing paper. This I made digitally myself. Sorry, I have stuff all over the floor. <laughs> Stepping on it all. All right, we'll do that. So we'll put this here. And then we're just going to fold this. Debate how I want to fold it. And try to see if it'll fit. If it's gonna... Maybe. I might have to fold it a couple times to get it right. I might have to trim off that top just a little bit. I don't. I think that's right. Let me see. Yeah, it looks a little too long. I'm going to trim this top piece just a fraction. Where my ruler go? There it is. I'm going to lay it on my grid so I can get it straight. should be able to make it smaller. Think about there. And then, I think that should fit. I might have to fold the bottom. Maybe. Maybe not. I might trim it just the tiniest bit just so I don't have to fold it. I'd rather not have to fold it again. I could probably cut it with my scissors, but probably safer to do this. I'm just going to trim this about there, I think. Scissor. I'm losing my mind. <laughs> there it is. Where did it go? There. Now it should fit. Alright, so we're going to glue this down. Fill up our little pockets. Probably ink them. I think that's cute. Alright, um... I don't think I'm going to make the back a pocket. I'm just going to leave it. I'm going to put it there. So I kind of wanted to see those just a little bit, so we'll just put it there. Could make the back pocket, but I'd rather it lay flat. Just glue. And we're just going to stick that right about. I'm 
far enough from my center so when I sew my signature in, it's not going to get in the way. All right, let's ink this up. No, might have a little bit of a white edge on there, so I'm just going to ink it just to. I might distress it. It's a little too perfect. I'm going to distress it a little bit. So I'm going to distress that. I'm just going to ink this real quick. And I'm going to distress that picture. This, eh, we might could ink it just a little. So plenty of writing space. If you're a writer, it's always nice to have lots of writing space. Not everybody writes in their journals. Some people like to just look at them. distress this picture just so it's not so perfect. So there's lots of ways you can distress these. Easiest thing to do is just to sand it a little bit. So we're going to take our little sanding disc and we are just going to sand the edges just a little bit. Some scratches in there so it's not so perfect. much or as little as you want and I'm not going to go quite that dark I don't think let's go let's do vintage where's vintage floating around here nope that ain't it there it is right, let's go vintage photo This will make it a little more sepia too. And we're just going to real lightly go over that. Not too much. Maybe take a rag or something. Now it's a little more. Pretty easy. You can add crackle. You can do all kinds of things to age these, but that's just a simple way of doing it. And then it's a little more aged. It's got some scratches and stuff. All right, stick that in there. And you can decide if you want anything there. You could put a little sticker there or something for a snippet. What am I going to do with this? do something with it. Hmm, let me see if I have some. I got some little Paris ephemera bits. Let's see if I have anything that looks okay. What is in here? Anything? No. I think that's too big. Key is probably not dark enough, is it? It might be dark enough. Hmm. I'm gonna put this little key. I found my tweezers. Come on. There you go. I'm just gonna put a drop of glue. If I can. I forgot to clean that off and pin it. A little bit of glue. And we'll 
just put a key there. It matches the inside of it a little bit more. Put this little pocket watch there, possibly. What else do you got? Anything? My phone's too big. Maybe that little pocket watch. Yeah, I think that's the only thing I see in this pile anyway. We'll add that little pocket watch just because. Either that or the heart even looks okay. Pocket watch? Yeah, pocket watch is better. I don't know what that fish is doing in there. It's from my farmhouse stuff. Bit of glue, just because I don't trust stickers. There we go. Cute. That works. So that is a way to make that little pocket. And I think that does the job for that page. do now. I know I had a couple of things that were just simple pockets like this. Let's just do those. So this needs backed first. It's just a um, a woven pocket tag, whatever. We're going to use it as a pocket though, if I can back it with something. I will back it with... Digging. Is that too big? Nope. Doesn't fit. Wrong color. Yeah, find a piece of paper that works. I think that's too thin. Yeah, it's too thin. Okay. Some scrapbook paper. I can't reach. Hold on. I should have something in here I can use. Okay. Let's see. What do we got? My browns. before I decide here. Mm, tone's wrong. I think just the brown. That'll work. Okay. I'm just going to back it so it's a little bit stronger. And then we'll turn it into a, just a little tuck. I think I'll just glue it and then I'll cut it. I have a video I did showing how to make these if you don't know how. It's on my, I believe it's on my YouTube page as a short. I'm 
just going to let a little bit of that edge show. I should use my guillotine, but it is across the room, so we're just going to go for it. Try to stay straight. Okay. We're just going to stick this. Sure it's the right way up. Yeah. I'm trying to I hold it where I don't want glue, so <laughs> it's the only way I can remember. So I don't want glue on those two sides. Typically I try not to make my folds toward the center any more than I have to um, because sometimes once it's bound it can be tricky to get things in but this is pretty flimsy and I think that because it has this whole opening area it'd be fine it's just a journaling piece with a little Eiffel Tower on it I may put something else more in there later but for right now I like that just like that and that we got that all right I should put this somewhere what can we do with that I just I coffee dyed this and then I just stuck stamps on it um with archival ink honestly I was just playing around I wasn't even sure I was going to use it or not but I might use it. I'm debating if I want to try to use it as an over the page tuck. So let's see if I have a page on the left that doesn't have anything on the other side. I don't in this one, I don't think. Oh, I do right there. So if I make it an over the page tuck. Then it could go here basically. Cut it off about there. Put something in there. Yeah. Why not? Let's do that. So I'm going to trim that. So I do not need it. Or I could just fold it in and glue it. Either way. I might just fold it in and glue it. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't show in the window and it'll strengthen the edge. So I think I will do that. Yeah, I'm going to cut it off uh, maybe about there. I'm debating if I want to fold that in too just to give it more strength. Maybe. So if I do that, here, let's fold. Right, we're going to cut it here first. I'm kind of thinking this out as I go. So I'm going to cut this edge open. Just cut that off. Okay, so what's going to happen is, let me take this off. When you do this, you need to make sure there's nothing on the other side. And it's going to go like this. I'm just going to go on that edge. So I just got to make sure it will go and not catch on anything. This edge is catching just a little bit. Okay, so what's happening is this edge right here is not glued down on the inside perfectly. 
so it's catching when I try to put it in there. It, it tries to snag on that, okay? So we'll cover that up to fix that. And then we're going to cut it here. And then I think I'll fold this in and this back in just to give strength. And we'll fold this. in like that. And I'll just cover up that inside a little bit. It'll cover that business stuff anyway. So let me find a paper. What's something pretty? Let's see what I've got. Oh, I have this stuff. Let's use this stuff. This might be fun. What do I have in here? Let's see. What do we got that matches? <sighs> Some of these are possibly French. Some are not. Is that French? Maybe. Generic. That's pretty generic. I see that. And that's pretty generic. I don't know if I'll need that much. I don't speak or write it, so I don't know for sure, but it's close enough. All right, so let's do this. So I'm going to cover up that. I think I, can, I think I can just feed it in there. So let's just use a basic one like this. I'm going to try to get it over that spot that's causing me issues. I think I can do that. All right, so first I'm going to glue this down just because I want it for strength. So let's glue that down. It's just going to give my edge just a little more strength. where I've got that address. This is like Mademoiselle something. I don't know. I'm just debating if I want to strengthen that. And if I do, I don't want to cut there. I think I will cut here. Like I said, I'm kind of thinking about this as I go. It's not cutting straight. I should have used my knife been safer. Try that again. All right, good enough. So then I'm going to fold that in just a little bit, but I don't need that much. We're just going to strengthen it with just some of that. So fold that. There and is that crooked? That's way crooked, isn't it? Let me straighten that. Here, I'll fold it this way first so I can get it straight. And then I'll turn it. Let's see if I can do it again. Alright, I'll do 
that one there, and then we'll go with this one. Just a little bit of it. This is a little bit um, off as far as size, but I don't think it'll matter because it's going to go over the edge. It should be alright. Let's see if I can fold that straight. Nope. <laughs> kind of sucking at folding it straight. Kind of straight. It's kind of straight. Alright. So, do I absolutely have to have that strength? I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. But we're going to do it anyway. The side is further down. I'm trying to get them at least even. I think I'm going to miter that center. Oops. Don't drop your glue. Stay. I'm going to miter this center just a little bit. Just trying to hit that corner. And we don't need it. Alright. So, I'm going to strengthen this. Hopefully this isn't too complicated. I'm really just making it up as I go because a lot of times when you're dealing with these envelope things, that's the best thing to do. Just figure it out as you go. Cut it where you need to cut it and go with it. It's usually fine. All right, I think that will fit. So I'm just going to double check it one more time real quick. Other than it's snagging, where I know it's going to snag. That'll be fine. We can decorate the other side with something later. Alright, so let's fix this little spot in the middle. So I will trim it. I think I'm going to. I don't know if I'm going to trim it longer. I might white on the back. We'll see. I might have to just make the back side match it. I'm going to try to glue this and slide it in there, so I'm debating. Do I want to use this glue? It's not super stiff paper. I don't know. It's going to be... We're going to try. It's going to be a little tricky to slide it in there, but I think I can do it. Edge. I went too far. Cleaned off. I didn't want glue right there. I got my fingers, guys. All right, let's see if we can slide it in there. I'll try to open it up as best I can. <laughs> this is always tricky when you're trying to slide one of these pieces in. Gonna work. Kind of straight. I can glue my fingers. So I went too far out. Where's my orange thingy? There we go. Got it. Now it shouldn't snag on that. Got it gluing to my table. Because I went too far out. So I think I'm just going to fold that over. Yep. That's what I'm going to do. I am just going to fold it over, even with that other piece. That works. I missed a spot there. All right. And then we'll just piece in something on the bottom there. one. Sure, it's a little bit messy right there. We'll just piece that one there. I think I'll trim it after the fact. I don't need to go that deep out there. So let me mark it so I don't stick glue where I don't need glue. Pencil. I'm going to put glue about to there. And no glue. Let me think about this. Well, I can put glue there, but... So, I don't really need glue past that point. Let's try that. I 
have no idea if this is the right direction in the writing. I guess it is. All right, let's stick this down here. Still glued it to my table, but that's okay. And then I'm just gonna trim it. Get this glue off first. I'm just going to go straight to the edge if I can. It's a little bit wet. There. And then I'm going to fold this over too. Hopefully it meets. Just barely. That evened up that back, and then I'll I'll probably collage something in there when I do the other side of it. There, good enough. Okay, so let's see what we got. So now we have a little over the edge piece for that. And then we can put whatever we put in there will show in the window. And then the back side just needs, for right now, I think just some collaging or something on it. We'll just do these papers or something. Just so that it's got something. So let's do that. Then I gotta figure out what I'm gonna put in there. Who knows? Like two pieces already. Odd. So I'm just gonna and then later on I might decorate it more. I might not, I don't know. Depends on how it looks. Where are my tweezers? too complicated with this very quick collage. somewhere. Maybe just right there. Oops. I get more glue on me than I am on my project today.
Lord hubby. Finally home from work. All right, there we go. Very vintage looking. So now we have this side. And this side. So this is going to go like this. Just an over the page. I'll try and see if it's, I don't think it's wet. I think it's just. Look. It's just because this paper is a little bit thin. All right, just like that. So there we go. That works. So we have that on that side, that on that side, and we'll put something in there later once I figure it out. So good way to use up a little junk mail envelope. All right, what else can we do today? Hmm. Let's see. I'll have to figure out what I want to put in there. I'll probably go through some of my ephemera and see if I have something that shows through that pocket, that little mirror, the little window, um, just right. As ideally, that's what I would like to do. Is pick something that will show through just in the right spot and that might take me a little bit of figuring out I'm probably just gonna have to print something up but anyway you get the idea so whatever it is we'll, we'll show through and it could be a whole page like that or, you know, just a little small tag. It doesn't really matter. But I'll just throw that in there for right now. I may switch it out, but I might just throw it in there for right now. Just give it a home. We'll give it a temporary home, maybe. We'll see. Don't need that. Okay, so that is that. Let's move that over there. See what else we got. Still need to do something with these roses. And this tag. Hmm. Do I have something that would work for that? that up or not. Can't decide. This is a thin page, somewhat thin. If I, did, I don't think I can do a top tuck because it's too, um, I don't think it would work might work. I don't know. Hmm. I could try to do a top tuck with it.
Is this going to be sewn in? And that's going to, I think that'll end up being a problem. It would have to be all the way over here, which would mean cutting off all of that. Or I just put it on the bottom and do a regular pocket. I still have to decorate that with more, I think. It's kind of plain. Not that that's a big deal, but I think I'll just do a regular pocket. Alright, what color ink do I want? Let's go with vintage, I think. Actually, I want to put a hole punch in that. point I'm just kind of filling in spots because this journal is pretty much almost done. I don't have a lot of room for things. <laughs> I'm fast. I'm trying to see what I wrote. What you wrote. I always think I'm not fast. I think I'm small. Yeah, the, the top pockets can be a little, a little picky. And that's a heavy tag, so I have a feeling it would probably be a problem. I think thinner ones tend to, like a medium weight tends to work better. So I'm just going to put it in the bottom. The problem, sometimes you get bottom heavy on your journals and then everything's in the bottom. And you find that they... They lay funny because everything's in the bottom. So we're just going to put it there. And then this will go here. And then I might do some more decorating on it at some point. I don't know. I'll have to think about if I have anything that would even look good on it. Or I'll just leave it like it is. And there's another paper clip that was holding something. Okay. Oh, that's what we're going to do. Something with that. It's such a pretty picture. I want to do something with it. I really like it. Gosh, I almost just want to use it. What if I put that other piece of paper in there? I could do that. I might just make it like a, a really wide belly band. It's just so pretty on its own. And I'll just put some more writing paper. I have several writing papers that I've made. I might as well use them. I think I'm just going to make a wide belly band with this. Just because it kind of looks cool. Just gonna put glue on each side. <laughs> it's got that button in there, so it's a bit um, curvy. It's bumpy. <laughs> Luckily, art glitter gl dries really fast, so I think it'll be fine. And then I've got this one, or I've got that, which is just a story. It doesn't have a good back, though. This is coffee dyed. Yeah, that's coffee dyed. Let me see if, what else I have. Probably just use that one letter that's left. Yeah. 
think I used up most of those type of things I made. So we'll just do this one. And I think I would do it. Let's see. Baiting how I want to fold it. I want to do it in thirds. I think I can just do it in thirds. It's hard to fold on that though. I'll have to see if it'll fit. Is that I don't know if it's wide enough. I'll go ahead and I'm gonna fold it real lightly. I'm going to go smaller than that. About there. About there. And about there. Will I go in there? Yeah. That will work fine. It should be about the right height. If not, I'll trim it. like these papers I did though. They're very pretty. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. There, a little belly band. All right. What else did we got? Done, done, done. I'm pretty sure that's where that goes. <laughs> I think that's where that goes. I love this color. I think it's my favorite. All right, we need something like this. Uh, more writing paper, and then we'll turn that, I guess, into the pocket. I know these are all very much similar because I'm just to that point where I'm just kind of making it work. Too big, probably. Hmm. I like it, but it's, I don't think it's going to work. Paris one? No, that's written the wrong way. I'm trying to find things to back it on. What is this? Large tag bases? Is it possible I have something in here? Possible? Maybe? Not the butterfly. Too brownish red. No, 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 no. Okay, that's kind of thick. Not green. All right, nothing there. Let me look in my other tag base spot. Um, where did I hide that? Big enough. We have watercolor papers. Could possibly trim down. Hmm. These actually have um, collage medium on them for some reason, and then I forgot what I put it on there for. <laughs> It's so typical. I, I totally put the collage medium on there for something. I don't know if it was for using crayons on them or what. And then I, I forgot what I put it on there for. So now I have to try to find what I put that on there for. I know I had a reason in my head. Woven, no. Distressed. Wrong color. And pull out some of my other distressed folders and see if I have the right color. Those are all small. Most of these I think are too small. 
blues, not blues. And those are themed. Too small, too small. Nope, nothing there. Don't worry about this. Black. Hmm. It's actually not bad. Let's do that. That's not bad. Okay. I like that. It's got gold and black on it. With the, there's a little bit of embossing done with a I don't know, an onion bag or a potato bag. I don't know, some sort of a plastic bag I had. But it's got just enough color. I'm trying to decide if it looks better in any particular spots. And get the most color from behind. I think we'll just go on the edge here. I think it's enough. I'm probably going to put a little divot in there, so I might stay just a little bit up. Maybe I'll go this way. No, because I won't have room. Yeah, that'll be too wide. Alright, we're just going to trim it. I'm losing a lot of the gold. I'm trying not to lose too much gold. Uh, we'll go there. Maybe I won't divot it. I don't have to. I'm just going to go for it. It's a little bit crooked. Not terrible. Worth it. A little more. Try not to get too close to my edges because then I won't be able to get it in there. I think that'll be okay. Alright. Yeah, I think I'm far enough over. I think it's crooked, but I'm not going to stress about it. Hold it where you don't want glue, so we don't want glue in the top. And we're just going to make a simple pocket with this pretty gold. I'm going as close to the outside edge as I can so that it doesn't get too much into my signature there. Another pocket done. These are our little doily pockets. Very cute. Oh, that's where I 
I use that? It's like I knew I used this somewhere. I was thinking that was the only tall thing I had. I just threw some stenciling on here. I think I, I did that off camera too. All right. Now we are really, I think we're good. I think that's probably all I'm going to do to this because a lot of the, I like to leave a lot of pages, you know, here and there blank because then you can put pictures or, you know, whatever, your own memorabilia if you're buying it. If I fill up all the pages with stuff, then you don't have any space to, to do anything. So this will get sewed in when we sew the signatures in. I think that is good. A couple little cards there. Paris background. All right. I don't think I need to do anything else, honestly, other than put lace and make another charm. But as far as putting things in pocket wise, I'm pretty happy with it. Got a decent amount of pockets and all kinds of little tucks and stories and things. I didn't put anything there, but I don't know. I don't know what to put there. I'll think about it and see if I see anything to put there. I really want something with maybe some blue or that kind of weathered blue color. That's there. And then I just leave that there. It's very colorful. It looks it looks very travel y, you know. And I think that kind of fits. And you don't really have to attach that with anything. It just kind of will sit there, but if you really wanted you could clip it in with something. This is this little box. I threw some things in here. Oh that's right. I did throw some things in a couple of these things. So I threw just some little ephemera bits and pieces in that box. And then I made an envelope for another box that we made. Let me see if I can find it. Something. Is it a box? I'm trying to remember. I think it was a box. Did I make I made two boxes, right? I think I did. All right, let me find it. There it is. All right, this one. This box I made, so I just threw some pictures, a little picture, Eiffel Tower, Here, let me zoom in, Eiffel Tower picture, and then ticket, I know it's not Paris, but maybe they went somewhere else, a little clock, another little theater ticket, and then I made this little envelope. And I wrote on there, Mademoiselle Celine, 26 Rue de something, <laughs> Montepeller. I don't know how you say it. Anyway, I just found an address somewhere. And I made this little envelope. And I put this little just piece of scrap Paris letterhead in here. Isn't it cute? A teeny, teeny, tiny envelope. And I just hand wrote that with a very fine tip pen. That way there's some stuff in there. Okay, so that's what I did there. And this has that couple of little cards in here. Okay, I think we're good. I think we are good. Cute. Still got a few blank pages, but that's okay. I am perfectly fine with that. Like I said, they can be things stuck on there. Pockets can be added later. So I will go through and um, I'm going to put lace on a lot of these edges. 
So any edges that lace will fit, I will put lace on. Probably a lot of these plain ones, I'll put some sort of a lace trim definitely there. And so there'll be some lace on here. I'm just going to go through my different laces and figure it out. I don't know what exactly. And then we got to do the rest of the cover and sewing. So just some different laces I will put on there. Maybe this one, this might be too big, but you get the idea. So I will do that. And then we still have to, so we'll sew in the signatures. And um, after the signatures are sewed in, this still needs to go on the um, outside and around. So if you were watching the first episode, you, you know what I mean. It goes on here, something like that. But I didn't want to do it until after I sewed the signatures on the side so that it would just go on better. So don't let me forget it. All right. But that's where we're at for now, guys. We're almost done with this guy. It's cute. It's bulky. It's a little bit bulky. I don't think it's quite gator mouth. But it's close. Let's see. Get those little charms in there. It's not quite gator mouth. But yeah, it's it's definitely full. It's definitely full. Okay. All right, so that is our journal for now, and I will be back on, today is Friday, I will be back on Wednesday to work on this. Um, Sunday, I think I'll do Stencil Sunday, so I'll do something for Stencil Sunday at 4 o'clock, so y'all should see me, I don't know what I'm going to do, I'll do something. I don't think it'll be in the journal, so I have to figure it out. <laughs> All right, guys, y'all have a wonderful rest of your evening, and I will see you next time. You just found us, Dorothy? Oh, no. Keep missing you. All right, well, take care. We'll see you next time. All right, bye-bye.